Okay. Everybody good? Yes. Alright. Um, I just wanted to introduce you to something. So I'm sure. You know what this is? It looks like papaya. <laughs> it looks like papaya, yeah. But you know what the name we give it to? We call it a golden pot. Golden pot. Golden pot. Yes. Yeah. The cocoa needs to be green, like um, yellow, like this, for it to be ready. Yeah. And uh, it goes through process here in Ghana. So I'm gonna crack open it, and then everybody can have a. You can just take a seed, and then suck into it. Don't bite into it. If you want to be adventurous, and you want to bite into it. <laughs> and it's also you. It's bitter. When you bite into it, it's bitter. Oh. It's very bitter. But it's good. Um, just suck into it as much as you can, and then just throw the seed away. Okay. Okay. All right. You want to? It's it's not good. Every boy we plant them, it will grow. But yeah, it will grow. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but during during the process, if you if, if you do it, if you want to get the cocoa, it's not good to suck on them and then dry them and use them, because there's a process that goes into it. Um, uh, one of the process is so let me let me explain to you. On the farms, when they when they harvested, this is the cocoa season. Um, it starts from October, so October is uh, going all the way to the end of the year. It's a cocoa season. And so the farmers work on the farm, and then when the cocoa are yellow on this, all the thing, or the tree, the cocoa grows on the trunk, and it starts as a flower. And then the flower, it will become small, like okra. And so when it's flowering, every flower is a cocoa. So you don't spoil the flower on the trunk. So you just leave it and then it will grow to become big like this and it has to be yellow like this. So there is a tool that they use to block the cocoa. The name of the tool they use to block the cocoa is called Go to Hell. <laughs> it is like, it's a, it's a, it's, it has a metal on top. Um, I don't know, those who watch horror movies, You've seen the devil holding a, kind of an, uh, an axe, a pitch, yes, but it has one and then it's tall, so, it goes, so they use it to block it and pull it from the tree. Because they don't want to spoil the trunk and the branch, because everything on the cocoa is very important. It can grow anywhere. So they use it to block it down. Yes, so they harvest it like that, and then when they harvest it, they, they'll, have, they'll go everybody, so most often they will have groups of people going to it, and then they'll block it, and then they'll all gather it, and then assemble at a location, and then they'll crack open the cocoa. And when they have opened the cocoa, they don't use cutlass. You don't use cutlass to cut open. You actually have to use two together, or use a machete, um, um, a wood, to hit it, to open it. So if you, if you use a knife to cut into it, you might cut into the bean. And if you cut into the bean, you will spoil it. During the fermentation process, inside will start growing moth and rot. So they don't do that. So you crack open it by hitting it together or use um, a stick to hit it to get open. And when it opens, they scoop the beans out. The beans grow in it. There is a kind of a, an umbilical cord that all the beans are connected to. So they take the seeds out of the umbilical cord and they throw the umbilical cord away. But they don't throw it away, they put it on the side because they can use it as feed for the animals, the livestock. So everything on the cocoa is useful. So when they get it, they do it all there. And then you know the plantain leaves or the banana leaves, they use it. And then they cover it right where they did it. They cover it for fermentation to take place. And once fermentation takes place for three days, then they collect everything and then bring it out in the open. 
I hope we get to see South Coco beans being dried outside. Okay. Oh, I saw somebody. I've already seen somebody. Okay. Dressing. You're on a long table. Yes, yeah, a long table. Yes. So they bring it out in the open to, to get. And once it's there, the cocoa should be supposed to be dry. You're supposed to get all the moist out of the cocoa. Because once there is moist in it, it will start growing. And when it starts growing, it's not good. So when it starts raining, they have to cover it up and then take it inside. And when it stops, and the one thing is, when the farmer who is drying it, even if it's not around, the community and anybody who sees it around when it's draining will come and cover it for the person. So they do that here. And so when it's done, then you have the producing buying company right in the village will buy it. They give them the government power sack where they pack everything into it. So he goes there and they buy it. Um, now one bag of cocoa is about, if I'm not mistaken, about 200 and... Um, yeah. um, 500. 500 cities. 500 yeah, so almost 500 Ghana cities. For a bag of cocoa, almost 500 cities. The government tries to motivate the farmers. Um, so there's a lot of set up things that uh, for them. For example, they have a scholarship fund for their children. They have other stuff for them to motivate them um, to get into it because it's a lot of work and then also a lot of money. But even the 500 that they get is still not enough because one thing is when you clear your land for the cocoa, um, there is a, a disease. It's called the swollen shoot or the black pot disease. When it attacks one tree, it spreads. And so it can spread from one farm to the other. And when it happens, they have to burn down everything. They have to burn down everything. And so sometimes they do compensation. So the, the government actually does the spraying for them, provides extension officers for to the farmers so that they can get, so some, there are some challenges. Even at some places, it's too far for the extension officers to go. So some farmers don't get some of these um, things. But then most poor things, the government push in extension officers, people to go to educate them, spray um, them against diseases and pesticides, and then teach them good practices and all that. So this is a short brief. Then when they are sent to the government warehouses, then they are shipped outside. All right. Okay, so I'm going to crack open and then you could have a look at it. So, um, Sean, Sean bought some chocolate. Sean, do you have it? Do you have what you bought? Yes. So it's called a golden tree. <laughs> so this, this brand, so they have the, this red one, this is called the King's Bite. It's the most popular one, and they have the dark chocolate. Where can we get it? In the shop. And in the street, you can get some. And the, the mall, uh, the place we stopped at, they have some. Yeah. So we have one that is orange flavored and we have the dark one. So this is the this is the orange flavored and then this is dark chocolate. Yeah, dark dark. Yeah, so this is called Tetakwashi. Tetakwashi is the person who brought cocoa to Ghana. Yes. Yeah. So this is dark chocolate. Oh my god. It is it's not it's nothing like what you have. It's the cocoa percentage is almost like 70 to 90 percent cocoa. You had that dark chocolate shop or he had it? I have it. Dark chocolate we might pop it. I'm so excited about it. If I can dance on that channel,